Oof. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to thank everyone for all of your support over the last few days. This is not anything that I ever in a million years thought would happen um, because of my little video. Um, but it was an angry one, so I can, I can see now that it was an important one. Um, I have received so many messages and uh, so many emails and comments from other people, disabled, not disabled, um, uh, that feel exactly how I do, have been through this a million times themselves. And, um, you know, I've given interviews and interviews have lasted 20 or 30 minutes and then it gets down to one soundbite, which is frustrating for me because there's so much more that I want to say. Um, without crying, <laughs> you know. Um, this whole incident, there was so much more that, that occurred uh, internally as well as between the employee and myself. And uh, many people have asked me if I knew her name. And to tell you the truth, I was, I was so upset. I was shaking so much. It was the last thing on my mind as to what her name was. I was surprised I had the peace of mind to uh, or to be alert enough to even think of pushing the record button uh, as my phone was in my lap already. Um, but the reason why I did that is because, you know, if this was the first time that it had happened, I don't know that I would have had the wherewithal to even think of recording. And, um, you know, human nature is what it is sometimes, and sometimes people just don't know. And I always want to give that, um, you know, some leeway. but. This had happened so many times, so many times. And it's almost every single time I go out of the house, something happens. Somebody parks in handicapped parking that doesn't have a placard or a sticker, you know, or somebody parks in, um, not just in the handicap, there could be like, you know, a, a car that's legit parked in the handicap spot, but then somebody else, you know, squeezes in in those blue lines. You know, and those are the most important part of the handicap spot because I, I have a mobility van and I need to open my ramp. So uh, and that's just the little smallest things. You know, every single time I go into some place, I would say every other time, let's give it that, something will happen at a place of service where well-meaning people, people aren't in, inherently you know, evil and dark and mean. Um, they just don't know and uh, they don't know how to talk to me. They don't know how to accept my service dog. They don't know whether they should accept my service dog. They don't know. Um, it's just, there's just so many things. And uh, so if this was the first time that it had happened to me, um, I, w I wouldn't have pulled out my camera. And, and it's just not something I do. And I never want to hurt anybody. And I'm kind of glad that I don't know what her name is because um, uh, this woman as an individual, um, although what hurt me most was the fact that the human element was missing completely. The fact that I was, you know, sitting there and, and, and crumpled over in pain and tears falling on the floor, not to me over dramatic, but that's what, that's the way it was. And to not have any sense of compassion at all, um, was mind boggling to me. And I think the more monotone she stayed and the more stoic she stood and the more, you know, how firmly she stood her ground um, without even listening to what I had to say, um, what I, the, I got more and more devastated and more and more hurt and humiliated and embarrassed. And, um, but that, you know, corporations rot from their head. And the problem is, is that corporations, especially in the service industry, you know, they, they don't train their employees properly. And a flight attendant had messaged me, and I'll, this will, I'll remember this forever, because this is the core of the issue. Um, so when she was hired, you know, they go through the safety training and all of that, of course. Um, but then they're handed, a, um, they're handed a, a handbook of policies. And they don't even open it with them, you know? I mean, they hand it to them, they say, take this home. But nobody reads it, you know, it's thick. It's got a lot of words <laughs> and it just ends up on a shelf or, you know, even worse than a trash can. And because nobody impresses upon them the enormity of these issues and how important these are. These are federal laws that are enacted because it's specifically to protect us. And, you know, uh, especially 
passengers in the airline industry, millions, millions of us are disabled and rely upon these rules and regulations that airlines don't even take a moment to enforce in their training programs or any service industry for that matter. Um, so, you know, with that being said, corporations rot from their head. And we want healthy corporations. We want healthy employees. We want, we want as passengers to enjoy our, you know, our, our interactions with pass with employees of these corporations. You know, we want to have a wonderful experience. We're not out there trying to have a miserable experience or trying to catch you or, you know, I'm going to record you. You know, I mean, people are recording these things now because we're tired because we've had it. You know, it's the old thing. We're not going to take it anymore. Well, we're not. We're not. There's so many people out there that just want to get on a plane and go to grandma. And why should we be subjected to feeling as though we're less than? I mean, forget even, not forget, but trust me. I mean, it could be anybody, you know, disabled or able-bodied. It's just about where's the, where's the humanity, where's the compassion, where is it? Where's the common sense? Oh my God, I'm sorry, the, the, the video's shaking because my hands are shaking. I appreciate so much all the comments that you all have made and thank you for visiting my Facebook. I feel like it is the one place. I'm on other forms of media, but social media, but there's something very intimate about Facebook and it really does engage one another. Um, in discussions like this, and this is this is when it's important, and this is when Facebook really can can like incite social change, and um, yeah, I'm really glad there's been exposure. Um, I'm glad that it's made people wake up a little bit. I'm glad that it certainly made Virgin take notice, and I know they've sent out an email to everybody. Um, the uh, the executive vice president of uh, their. Uh, uh, the, what was it, the, the executive vice president of uh, human uh, resources or, um, you know, customer service. Um, he was, he called me from London and um, I know that, I know that somebody I know personally made a phone call to the Virgin headquarters begging them to please have somebody call me personally to not put out this soundbite because every single time, either a, a media, uh, a news corporation, or um, anybody went on their on, went on their Facebook or emailed them and asked a question or a comment or they were angry, they got the exact same rote response. And and uh, it's another example of the tone deafness of today. And this gentleman did call me. I'm not going to say his name, um, but I appreciated it. I do think that he truly, genuinely felt remorse. I think he was disgusted. Um, I think he was embarrassed. And um, as a representative of the, of the airline, I think he should have been. Um, but I do think individually as a human being that this is not something he could ever imagine happening. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, and he said, he goes, well, I've been there for 11 years and I've never seen anything like this happen before. And I said, you know, I thought about it for a minute. And my first response was, well, first of all, from the disabled community, we're so friggin' tired, man. I mean, even just to get through every day, each and every day already is such a burn in and of, it, in and of itself that, uh, you know, we think like, what's one more, you know, what, what's one complaint to a restaurant going to do? What's, what's one letter to an airline ever going to accomplish? You know, if you look on, on uh, at the statistics online, and I, I have to figure out where it was, but they, they talked about how many complaints that um, the disabled community has filed, the ADA violations to airline companies, and it was our American airlines, airlines in the United States, that were the top four and five, one through five. The baby virgins trying to, I know they're trying to do something right. And um, from my understanding of Richard Branson, when he, when he founded the company and the type of person he is, he's one of the greatest humanitarians of all time. 
He's a wonderful human being. Um, I've known a few people who know of him, uh, maybe they're a degree away from him, but uh, his reputation is truly genuine. And I know that they sold out to Alaska Airlines and uh, they've combined themselves. Now they're a conglomerate. Um, I don't know if Mr. Branson is still you know, shareholder or whatever it is, but I'm sure that he's probably you know, just a, as upset as I was um, that this happened. Um, so the foundation of Virgin, uh, Virgin America and Virgin Atlantic and their airlines is truly based on trying to have the healthiest environment possible between their employees and their clientele. However, what hit me quite deeply is that if this can happen on Virgin, can you imagine what's happening on United and American and are the ones here in the States that are based in the States? I mean, that's the issue. And I've flown, I, you know, I rarely get to fly Virgin, I rarely get to fly at all anymore. But I used to fly all over, all over the world with my, with my job. I was really lucky and I've experienced a lot in my travels when I was able-bodied that that alone was upsetting. But after my accident and being in the chair now and having Bluebell, who's, you know, she's saved my life. She's with me 100% of the time and she's just always my angel. And I would say most of the time she's also an icebreaker, you know, and that makes me feel good. You know, people want to pet her and they want to say hi and they want to give her love and she wants to love them back. But for, for this to happen the way it did, it, it's just a real eye-opener that, that something needs to be done now. Now. Like, I don't want this just to be uh, news bites and it's, it's going to go away because, you know what? our disabled population isn't going away. You know, we're going to be here a long time. And I know that they do not appreciate that fact of how large we are in the, how large a population we are in their clientele. And unless they start listening to us and caring about us or just caring about people in general uh, that, that fly their airlines and that we're not just filling a seat I mean, I don't know what kind of people they think we are, but, you know, those seats are so skinny right now that, you know, you got to be a beanpole to sit in them. So I don't know if all of us are beanpoles. I don't know who they expect to be sitting in those seats anymore. But they smash everybody together so much, and everybody's so uncomfortable as it is. And, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I wore a, a blue suit and a hat and white gloves when I got on that plane. Now, times change, of course, and now we're in a new age. But does humanity have to have to go away just because time marches on? Or do we have to lose it completely? Is that, is that where we're at? I don't know. I'm glad I made the video. And I'm glad it woke some people up. Um, I wish I could do more and I'm trying. Not I wish, I am. I am going to do more. I really am. I'm already um, getting connected with people who are uh, in charge of creating and changing uh, federal laws regarding uh, the disabled and access and ADA rules and regulations. And it is my hope that I can um, propose and submit legislature demanding that our corporations in the airline industry as well as service industry are mandated to train their employees as to the ADA rules, laws, and regulations. That's what we want. That's what all of us want. And hopefully it can trickle down to the fact that they can also train their employees to think for themselves a little bit and not be robots and not just stand there and, and spew rote policy at us. That we're people. And if somebody's sitting in front of you and they're shaking and they're crying, and they're upset, or they look different, or they sound different, or maybe they have an invisible disability that they can't see, that they can check in with themselves for a minute and remember that we're all human beings, and to stop acting as though they're showing up for a job, you know, and signing out at the end of the day, and that it's just a paycheck, because you know what, it's not. When you're in the service industry, 
you, you signed up to work with people and you signed up because your company wants you to ensure that, your, that their clientele is happy. And yes, I'm sure some people complain about hot coffee, you know, or they don't like where their seat is, or maybe their flight's late. But that's not the entire population. And the disabled community, all we want is a flight. All we want is to get on the plane. All we want is to be able to rest in between. And all we want is for the people that we engage with, with the airlines, are human to us. Maybe, maybe smile. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if we say we're in pain, can you help us? That maybe you go back to, you know, what's that book? All I really ever need to know I learned in kindergarten. Maybe that's their handbook. You know, maybe that's what the airlines need to give their, their people. Sorry. <laughs> um, I thank you again, everybody. Thanks for bearing with me through all of this. And um, I'm not going anywhere, dudes. I'm here. <laughs> I'm sticking this out. So stick it out with me, please. Just, uh, this, is, uh, this is not where it ends. This is just where it begins. And we're in this together. And anyone who's watching this video or cared enough to stick this long with me and listening to what I have to say, I thank you very much. And this is for you. All right. And this is nothing to do with me anymore. It can't. They kept asking me what they can do for me to make this better, to, to prove to them that they care about their clientele. And I, you know, I told them, I said, you know, all I, all I would want is for you to please take this moment to stand up with me. Please don't leave me alone out here. Can you just stand up with me and be the first corporation to say, you know, let's make a difference. Let's ensure that this doesn't happen anymore. And the only response I got is they sent out an email and made sure that their employees understood the policy. What about the next hire? What about the next round of hires? What about the other airlines? This isn't just Virgin. This is everybody. It's not about, you know, a, a year-round pass to their lounge, which they offered me. It's not about lounge. Not even about a couch. I guess that's all I have to say right now. But I'm sure there'll be more. <laughs> oh, my hand's shaking too much. <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. And um, please stay in touch, okay? And, you know, stay, please stick to my Facebook and let's make a difference together, okay? All right. Thanks, everybody. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And I'll, I'm sure I'll be talking to you soon.